So taking the square root of a fraction is pretty easy to do. In order to understand how to take the square root of a fraction, like let's say I had a square root of 9 over 25, the answer will be 3 over 5. No more square root. However, let me give you the explanation. In order to explain this, I need to go back to the key concept that we learned yesterday, which was the square root of a times b equals the square root of a times the square root of b. We did that yesterday. And what this was is where you were multiplying two numbers on the inside of a radical, you could take this radical and split it to each of the terms that you were multiplying by. It's the same thing today when we have the square root of a divided by b, we're going to be able to take the radical that we have here and split it to each of the top and the bottom. So the square root of a over b is really the square root of a divided by the square root of b. Please jot that down. So right here we have our key concept. It says when taking the square root of a fraction, you can split the root to the numerator and to the denominator. Okay. Kind of like before, where you had a times b, you could split it to the a and to the b. Right here, it's a divided by b, you could split the root to the a and put the root on the b. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, especially if you have both perfect square numbers on numerator and denominator. So example number one, the square root of 4 over 9. I'm going to rewrite that by splitting the root and saying the square root of 4 over the square root of 9. And what is the square root of 4? And what's the square root of 9? Three. Two thirds is my answer. Okay, how about the next one? Split the root, 16, 25, 4 over 5. 4 fifths is my answer. So once again, guys, we have the square root of a fraction. You got to take this root and split it, put the square root on the 27 and the square root on the 49. Now this one's not that easy because... 27 is not a perfect square number. Now, 49 is a perfect square number, so the bottom's easy to do, but the top, you need to do some more work. So what is the square root of 27? If you did the square root of 27 on the side, let me do it right here. I break that down to what? 9 times 3. And you split the root, which means you'll get what? 3, three square root of 3. So this is work that I did on the side. Why did I do this on the side? Because the square root of 27, I'm going to rewrite it as 3 square root of 3. So my answer is going to be 3 square root of 3 over, now what is the square root of 49? 7. Done. Cool? Let me box that in. So 3 square root of 3 over 7 is the answer to number 3. So it's pretty simple, guys. The square root of a fraction, split the square root to the numerator and the denominator, and then do any math possible. Simplify. Simplify the top, simplify the bottom. It's kind of like doing two problems. You do a problem up here, a problem down there. Now, there is one little catch. When you're simplifying, if you ever end up with a radical and the denominator, you have to get rid of that radical and the denominator. Check this out. When simplifying, you must not leave a radical in the denominator. If you have a radical in the denominator, you must get rid of it by multiplying both top and bottom by that same radical value. It would be good to copy this down. But before you copy, how about you understand number one before you copy? You see how there's a radical down here? I cannot leave that down there. Can't. So I need to get rid of the square root. I could have a number. I could have three down there, but I don't want the square root of three. So if I want to get rid of the square root, I need to multiply. Exactly. You just said square, right? Square it. So how do you get rid of a square root? By squaring. But what is squaring really? Squaring is really multiplying with itself. So if I multiply it with itself, it'll make the radical disappear, right? Because square root of 3 times square root of 3 is really the square root of 3 squared, and the radical and the square cancel itself out, and you just have a 3 left over. And what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So you multiply by square root of 3 up here. So your final answer is 1 square root of 3 up on top over 3. No more square root. Now, you guys probably feel a little confused right now. 
How about this? Let's go over some exercises, some practice problems that'll make this a lot clearer to you. Let me do this. What is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? Remember, you could put them together, and that'll be the square root of 3 times 3, which is really the square root of 9, which is really what? 3. What about the square root of 5 times square root of 5? What's that really? That's really the square root of 5 times 5, which is really the square root of 25, which is really what? 5. How about the square root of 7 times the square root of 7? That's going to be the square root of 7 times 7, which is really the square root of 49, which is really what? 7. Don't you guys feel like we're wasting our time now? Yeah, yeah because what is the square root of uh, 4 times the square root of 4? That's really just 4. Right Now, of course, you could do some work. You could say, oh, the square root of 4 is 2 times 2. That's 4. But whenever you multiply a radical value with itself, it eliminates the radical. I should probably rephrase that. Whenever you multiply a square root value with itself, it eliminates the square root. So any time, like the square root of 9 times the square root of 9, what's the answer going to be? Nine. 9. I mean, you could show the work and say, oh, 9 times 9 is 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. But whenever you multiply a radical uh, square root value with itself, it eliminates the square root. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3, what's the answer? 3. The square root of uh, happy face times the square root of uh, happy face equals happy face. Simple as that. Okay, whenever you take a square root value, multiply it with itself, it eliminates the square root. So with that said, Number one, I don't want the square root. I need to multiply it with the same exact square root value, both top and bottom. So my answer is on top, square root of 3, on the bottom, just 3. Let's look at number two. We just learned that if you have a fraction on the inside with a root on the outside, you could split the root to both top and bottom. So let me do that first. I want to put the square root of 81 over the square root of 8. Which one could I do easily? The 81. So what's my answer up on top? Nine. I have 9 so far up on top. And on the bottom, I'm going to take this 81, right, or this square root of 8, and I'm going to break it down with multiplication to get a perfect square number. What's it going to break down to? 4 times 2, right? And when I split the root, I will end up with what as a simplified answer for the square root of 8? 2 square root of 2. Does that make sense? So the square root of 8 is really this work, 2 square root of 2. So let me write down the square root of 8 in the denominator, but let me write it as 2 square root of 2. Yay? Now down here, I do not want this square root. I don't care about the 2. That's a nice 2. But I don't want this square root. What, how could I get rid of that square root? Multiply it with itself. And in this case, it has the square root of 2. So I want to multiply the top with the square root of 2 as well. So on top, I have 9 times the square root of 2. That's exactly that, 9 square root of 2. And on the bottom, I do have this 2 that's all by itself times. Now, what is the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? It's just 2. So in the denominator, I have 4. So my final answer on that one is 9 square root of 2 over 4. Again, you cannot leave a radical in the denominator. You cannot leave a radical in the denominator. Of course, on the inside, if you could simplify, if you could reduce that fraction, go for it. If it were 80 over 8, you could divide and get 10 and just work with the square to 10. But right here, 9 over 108. We could, since 9 is a perfect square number, split them and... Uh, Start doing the math. Square root of 9 over the square root of 108. What is the square root of 9? Three. 3. So up on top, I have 3 so far. Now on the bottom, zooming in here, on the bottom, 108, I need to break that down. So I could probably break it down with 4, but the higher the perfect square number, the better. 36 times 3 is the best option for 108. So let's do that on the side. We're going to go... 36 times 3, we're going to split the root, 
and we're going to get 6 square root of 3. So 108 is really the same thing as 6 square root of 3. So I'm going to write 6 square root of 3 down here. Now there's a couple of things that we still need to do. We actually have a fraction, 6 thirds, that could be reduced. I mean 6 thirds, 3 6. 3 over 6 reduces down to what? 1 over 2. So what we really have is 1 over 2 square root of 3, but then again, we cannot leave a radical in the denominator. So I need to multiply by what? Itself, itself which is what? Square root of three. The square root of 3, both top and bottom. Multiply both top and bottom by the square root of 3. So up on top, you have square root of 3. And on the bottom, you end up with the 2 that's right there times, what's the square root of 3 times square root of 3? It's just 3. So what we really have as a final answer is a square root of 3 over 6. So this rule of splitting the root to the numerator and the denominator, it could also be applied backwards when it benefits you. For example, right here we have the square root of 8 over the square root of 2. So you could do the square root of 8 and simplify it, and then you could get rid of the square root of 2 by multiplying both top and bottom by the square root of 2, but that's a lot of work. It's easier to go backwards. Now, what do I mean by backwards? If you have two roots, you could put them together underneath one root and divide the values A and B. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do with number 1. I'm going to use the rule backwards. I'm going to put one single root, and on the inside, I'm going to put 8 divided by 2. Now, why would I use this rule backwards? Because 8 divided by 2 is what? 4. So you really have the square root of 4. And what is the square root of 4? 2. So number 1, the answer is 2. Of course, we could have taken the long route. I could have broken down the square root of 8 to 4 times 2. I could have gotten rid of the square root of 2 in the bottom by multiplying both top and bottom by the square root of 2. That would take a really long time. But if I recognize this rule and use it backwards where I have two separate roots and put them together under one and divide A by B on the inside, it works out beautifully to give me a nice perfect answer. Same thing with number two. Let's put that together and we'll have 27 divided by three. What's 27 divided by three? Nine. nine. So what's the square root of nine? Three. See how it works? Mm -hmm. Using the rule backwards is great. Uh, number three, it's not as easy and w as one and two, but I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to put both uh, values underneath the one square root. And then I'm going to reduce that inside fraction. Eight over 32 reduces down to one fourth. And then if I were to take the root and split it again, the square root of one on top is one and the square root of four is two. So I get the nice, beautiful answer, one half. So that's really all there is to uh, taking square roots of fractions.